this video we'll look at the uh, cardiac cycle. Uh, there are a few keywords that is worth noting here. Number one is the word diastole. Diastole means uh, relaxation of the heart. So it could be the whole heart is undergoing diastole, which is there is one section where the whole heart undergoes diastole. It just relaxes, means that blood can actually enter the, into the chambers. Then the other word is called systole, which is mean which means that it is contracting. So we could have uh, atrial systole, which means the atria are contracting to push the blood from the atria into the ventricles, or we could have ventricular uh, ventricular systole where the ventricles are contracting to push the blood out of the heart, out of the ventricles and out of the heart to, to go to the lungs or around the body. We would not ever have a situation where the whole heart is undergoing systole because that just would mean the blood isn't actually going to be able to go anywhere at all. But we would have whole heart diastole. Now this diagram here often makes people feel a little bit confused but today we'll break it down into a few parts. Number one, we need to know what the three separate graphs mean, uh, what different types of pressure they're representing, uh, what's actually happening at these three stages and then what's actually happening at the intersection points. So first of all, let's go have a go at uh, actually labeling these different pressures. So first of all, let's look at the one on the bottom here, which is in blue. That is the atrial pressure. And I'm going to simplify it in the future as AP. So the atrial pressure, as the name implies, is talk about the blood pressure inside the atria. And we will be considering both the left and right atria together because the heart contracts, the atria contract together, and then the ventricles contract together. So it's not as if the left and right operate, it, operate in two different sets. It's both of the atria contracting or both of the ventricles contracting at the same time. So this line here is the atrial pressure. Then we've got this green line here, which kind of jump, jumps up really, really high and comes back down. That is the ventricular pressure. So as the name implies again, ventricular pressure means the the blood pressure inside the ventricles. You can see that it has a massive jump and the pressure can go so much higher uh, compared to the atrial pressure. I mean, thinking about the structure of the heart, you would know that the walls of the ventricles, especially the one on the left, is much, much thicker than, generally speaking, than the atria as well. So um, that's kind of one of the reasons why the pressure could go so much higher. It's because they can contract much stronger. Then finally, here we've got this red line here, that is the aortic pressure. And I'm going to simplify it as AOP. So again, this is the blood pressure in the aorta. So specifically about the, um, the blood vessels that are actually coming out of the heart from the ventricles. Even though it says aortic pressure, because we tend to look at the blood pressure in the left-hand side of the heart, but the same concept could be applied to the pressure in the pulmonary artery where the blood is coming from the right ventricles through that into the lungs. It works the same way because like I said before, both of the ventricles be contracting at the same time. So the blood is traveling through the aorta at the same time as the blood traveling through the pulmonary artery. But we'll just refer to aortic pressure um, to make it simple. So as you can see here that uh, there's actually a very faint timeline here. It's at 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 as we go along. Um, so normally one cycle kind of lasts between 0.7 to 0.8 seconds uh, and then another one will start kicking off. So it's important to remember that this is a cycle. This is only one, this is one cycle and then this whole cycle repeats again if we continue on with the graph. So largely speaking, we can separate them into three major stages. So the atrial systole is where the uh, atria, both left and right atria, are contracting. Remember, systole means contraction. So when they're contracting, what it means is that actually the blood is flowing from the atria into the ventricles because the pressure in the atria would be increasing. So even though here it doesn't look that obvious because generally speaking, the pressure in the atria is comparatively a lot lower than the ventricles, but it is slightly increasing. It's squeezing the blood through. And it's important to understand is when the atria are contracting, the ventricles would be relaxing. And if the ventricles are contracting, the atria would be uh, relaxing. So at this point, we call it the atrial systole. We can also call it the ventricular diastole because the ventricles are relaxing, hence why the pressure is actually lower than the atrial pressure as shown from the graph. 
Then at this point, you can see that the ventricular pressure is shooting upwards, so we can tell that the uh, ventricles are actually contracting. Now that is why the pressure increases. So that's why this part is called ventricular systole, also known as atrial diastole because atria are relaxing at this point, hence the drop in pressure. So the ventricle systole means, ventricular systole means the pressure will go very high up and then as the blood, so that would mean that the blood is actually leaving from the ventricles uh, out of the heart. So eventually the pressure will drop again as the all of the blood has traveled through. And actually, if we look at the graph here, this line can, as we extend it through, the reason why I put this line here is because this corresponds directly to this intersection point. This intersection point is when you can see that the ventricular pressure is dropping lower than the aortic pressure. And actually at that point, as the ventricular pressure is dropping, uh, very soon after that, the atrial pressure is also dropping as well at the same time. And we say that at this point is the whole heart diastole. So this whole section, the entire heart is relaxing. And the point of that is to allow time for the blood to fill in, uh, fill into the atria and the ventricles again. And then after that, you can see the pressure is increasing because the blood is filling into the heart. And after that, soon after that, at maybe about 0 0.8 seconds, then atrial, dust, uh, atrial systole will occur again to do that final push of all of the blood to, uh, to leave the atria into the ventricles again. So as the blood is filling in, it immediately enters atrial systole and this whole cycle begins again. So generally speaking, three stages, atrial systole, the atria are contracting to fill the ventricles with blood. Then after that, ventricular systole, where the ventricles will contract to push the blood out of the heart. And then diastole, where the whole heart relaxes to allow the blood, uh, heart to refill with blood, then back in again. And we say that atrial systole lasts about 0.1 seconds, so it's very, very quick. Then ventricular systole, roughly about another 0.3 seconds. And then at 0.4 seconds there, the diastole occurs, roughly. And then the whole cycle repeats, maybe in about 0.7 to 8 seconds. Now with that in mind, we can then start looking at what's actually happening at the four different intersection points, which actually explains the whole thing even better. Uh, there is a specific format that I would recommend that you use when it comes to explaining these four section, intersection points. Is looking at number one is which pressure is higher than which, and then number two, what is actually happening uh, in terms of the valves, which then leads on to saying how is the blood flowing. First of all, looking at the graph, you can determine which are the two pressures involved at each different points. So first of all here, it's about the ventricular pressure and the atrial pressure. So at this point, the ventricular pressure, you can see that is, is shooting up because it's entering ventricular systole uh, and the atria, atria are entering a diastole. So the ventricular pressure is, first of all, we say much higher than the atrial pressure. That means the blood will want to leave the ventricles. And actually the blood can have two different ways to do it. It can number one, which we all know, is to from the ventricles, they will go out of the aorta or the pulmonary artery. Another way that the blood can flow is to go from the ventricles back into the atria because the atrial pressure is so much lower than the ventricles, it could technically do that. However, we know the blood is very good at not allowing that to happen because it's got the atrioventricular valves, which are the bicuspid and tricuspid valves. So we say at this point, the ventricular pressure is much higher than the atrial pressure. And we say at that point, the atrioventricular valves close. And they close to prevent the backflow of blood. So this is what happens at point one. The atrioventricular valves close to stop blood from going back to the atria. So that means all of the blood will be forced to go through the other direction, which is the aorta. So now let's have a look at the aorta pressure. So the aorta pressure is previously quite, it's kind of low, but then at this point, it suddenly shoots up. And we know why, because the ventricular pressure here, as at, at this point, the ventricular pressure is it's increasing due to the uh, contractions of the ventricles. Therefore, the pressure shoots up so high that it's higher than the aortic pressure. And we say the semilunar valves will then open to allow that blood to go from the ventricles into the aorta and out of the heart. Or you can say the ventricles into the pulmonary artery, into the lungs. So this is what's happening at point one and two. At this point, the, because of ventricular systole, the ventricle pressure would increase massively. And it would increase so that it's large in the at uh, atrial pressure. Therefore, the uh, atrial ventricular valves would close to prevent the blood to go back into the atria. And literally right after that, uh, the 
the pressure will be even higher than the aortic pressure, therefore forcing the semilunar valves to open, allowing the blood to leave the ventricles and through the aorta to the rest of the body. So these two things happen right after each other. Then at this point, eventually it's going to peak because all of the blood is already gone, pretty much. Uh, so the pressure will start uh, decreasing again. At, at this point, at 0.4 seconds, as we mentioned previously, if we correlate back to this part, part is where the whole heart is undergoing diastole. That means the atria and the ventricles are relaxing. So therefore, the pressure will start to drop, the, especially the ventricular pressure, because it was previously so high. And at this point, we can see the ventricular pressure is now much lower than the, than the aortic pressure. So the aortic pressure is much higher than the ventricular pressure. Therefore, this time, the seminolar valves would want to close because the blood in the aorta cannot go back into the heart. That would be very inefficient. They would have to go out of the body. So therefore, the seminolar valves would close here. So that happens, and then the ventricular pressure keeps decreasing until it reaches a point here where the pressure is so much lower, even lower than the atrial pressure. So therefore, we say the atrial pressure is now much higher than the ventricular pressure, and therefore, think about this way, the blood would want to flow from the atria into the ventricles and the body would do that. So therefore, we say that the valves involved here would be the atrioventricular valves and these valves would then open to allow that blood to actually flow from the atria into the ventricles. At that point, it's important to notice that the atrial pressure is higher than the ventricular pressure but not actually because of atrial systole. The whole heart is relaxing. But simply we're saying that the blood is constantly already flowing in partly through this way. And uh, as that happens, then the atrial pressure is higher than ventricular pressure simply because of the blood flowing in. And it reaches a point where the, where it, the pressure is so much higher, then it, the blood will then naturally force the valves open and it goes into the ventricles as well. But then at the end of that, at some point, then the atria will contract, so we enter atriosystole to have that final push of make sure that all of the blood in the atria at that point is pushed into the ventricles. So it's, it's almost like the end bit of it. It's just that final, final push to make sure we don't waste anything in some sense in this particular cycle. So to run through this again, we've got pressure on this side and the time on this side. We say the whole cardiac cycle lasts about 0.7 to 0.8 seconds, depending on the person, and we have three major stages. We've got the atrial systole, ventricular systole, then a long time for diastole before returning back to atrial systole. And we'll be considering three different pressures. Number one is the pressure in the atria, then pressure in the ventricles, and the pressure in the aorta, or we can say the pulmonary artery. At this point, because of atrial systole, the atria are contracting, the ventricles are relaxing, therefore uh, the blood would f there is a final push of blood into the, vent uh, into the ventricles. Then eventually we say we enter ventricular systole, where the ventricles are contracting, therefore the ventricular pressure is much higher than the atrial pressure, therefore the uh, atrial ventricular valves would close to prevent the blood to go back into the atria. At the same time, the ventricular pressure would increase in, as to such a point that it's higher than the aortic pressure, therefore it would force the semilunar valves to open in order to allow the blood to go from the ventricles into the aorta and out of the heart. Then we get to diastole, where the whole heart is relaxing, the ventricular pressure starts to drop because number one, it is relaxing, and number two, there isn't that much blood left either, and then it would drop so much lower than the uh, aortic pressure, and therefore the blood would naturally want to go back into the ventricles, but we want to avoid that, therefore the semilunar valves will close to prevent the backflow, and then it will keep drop, it will keep dropping until the point that it's lower than the atria, atrial pressure, therefore the atrial ventricular valves will then open to allow the blood to go from the atria into the ventricles, refilling the ventricles with blood. Um, and the atria is constantly being filled up with blood during this time because it's relaxing, and then it will, both of them would refill the blood, increasing the pressure. Eventually, at one point, the atria will start contracting again, kicking, kickstart the whole process once more. And we often describe the heartbeat as ba-thump, ba-thump two very quick beats right after each other, about 70 beats per minute. And actually the beating sound that we can hear, the ba thump, the two sounds, is actually the sound of the valves closing here, the atrioventricular valves and the semilunar valves. So the first, in terms of ba thump, ba, the first sound is actually referring to the atrioventricular valves closing. And when they close, they would make a sound. 
and then very quickly after that you get the thump in the thump which is the seminal valves closing as well to stop the backflow of blood again because the blood is trying to leave the heart. So whenever you hear your heartbeat, ba-thump, ba-thump, that's actually your valves closing. That's the sound of valves slapping together, closing. And that is the cardiac cycle.